Hi everyone, Miss Armstrong is away, as you can see, uh, she's been replaced by the poster, hopefully she'll be back for the next key area. We are nearly done with Unit 1, I promise, is we've got this key area, one more to go at key area 8, and then we're done. I know it seems like we've covered a lot, but hopefully you're finding it uh, informative and interesting um, as we go through this course. So, this is key area 7, which is cellular respiration. Okay, and we're going to be focusing on ATP and glycolysis in this video. Uh, we'll be looking at the cit citric acid cycle in the second video, and I think there's a third video focusing on the electron transport chain. So we've tried to divide it up into small, manageable chunks. Now, there is significantly more detail in this than in National 5 in terms of the chain of reactions that occurs in both fermentation and aerobic respiration. Really, when we're looking at cellular respiration here, we are mostly talking about aerobic respirations, the idea of production of ATP through energy transfer from glucose. OK, so things you should know from National 5 uh, about aerobic respiration are aerobic respiration produces ATP, which is the energy molecule. It starts in the cytoplasm, ends in mitochondria. Glucose in the first stage is converted to pyruvate and two ATP are made. And then in the second stage, pyruvate is broken down to carbon dioxide and water using oxygen. And the idea is the mitochondrial stage, the second stage, produces a lot of ATP. OK, so if you that's that all seems completely unfamiliar, I'd recommend going back now to the Nat5 stuff um, before you try attempting to build on it with what we're about to cover. Now, ATP. Um, you might have been taught this in National 5, it depends on your teacher, but ATP is required for any cell process that needs energy. So active transport, protein synthesis, any anabolic reaction will require ATP, the majority of them. OK, now you might have been shown this reaction by your Nat 5 teacher. Uh, the idea is when ATP is broken down, looking at this top arrow, it releases energy, but that converts the ATP into something called ADP and PI. So inorganic phosphate is what that stands for. Now, ATP means adenosine triphosphate. So it's talking about three phosphates there. ADP is adenosine diphosphate, di meaning two. And then you've got your loose phosphate molecule, your PI sitting there. So that makes the third phosphate molecule. Um, now, the idea is by breaking apart that last phosphate molecule off the ATP, that releases energy. If you want to make ATP, you take the ADP, you take the PI, you use energy to force them back together and create ATP. And the idea is it's the difference between a flat battery and a charged battery. Try and imagine this. So ATP is the charged battery. It's ready to go. It's ready to release its energy. The flat battery needs energy input in order to become charged again. Now, this bit here is crucial for the understanding of the first part of respiration. Phosphorylation is the addition of a phosphate to a molecule. OK, that is just a straight definition there. So you've added a phosphate molecule to something that is called phosphorylation. That's the name of that reaction type. OK, when ADP is phosphorylated, ATP is formed. So let's have a look at that reaction at the bottom. ADP has the phosphate, the PI, added into it and that creates ATP. Now, I get a lot of people asking, is the little i next to the p essential? And the answer is yes. You must have that tiny little i next to the p to show that's inorganic phosphate. OK, you don't need to understand that it's inorganic phosphate, but you have to have the little i there. If you just put ADP plus p equals ATP, no points. OK, you have to have the i added in there. OK, the addition of the phosphate, forcing the phosphate onto the ADP needs energy, which is held inside the ATP. And then if the phosphate was to break away, that energy would be released again. OK, dephosphorylation is the opposite of that. That's removal of a phosphate group from a molecule. So ATP can undergo dephosphorylation to provide energy and the phosphate to another molecule. So say another molecule needed a phosphate. What could happen is the ATP could one drop and go here. You can have my one. It releases a burst of energy. The other molecule gains the phosphate molecule and everybody is happy. And again, notice the I is next to the P. The video cuts it out, but the I is next to the P. OK, so we always we never say P just alone. I know it looks like that when the video is up there, but the I is definitely there. OK, and that can be used to phosphorylate other molecules. So add that phosphate to another molecule. You've won and phosphorylated that molecule. OK, so 
that's a basic idea around ATP that you need to be aware of because we're just going to sort of build on that when we look at glycolysis, the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain. Aerobic respiration is a process by which large amounts of ATP are produced. This is our preferred type of respiration inside our own muscles, inside our own body. We don't like to be without oxygen. You know what happens when we're without oxygen is we tend to die pretty quickly. Um, so the idea is we want to be doing as much aerobic respiration as possible. The three stages, you need to know the names of them. So stage one is called glycolysis, not glycolysis, as I called it for about five years. So glycolysis. Stage two is the citric acid cycle. And stage three is the electron transport chain. Now, you may sometimes see stage two in internet resources referred to as the Krebs cycle. You have to call it the citric acid cycle, uh, but the Krebs cycle is the same process. You may also see the electron transport chain referred to as the cytochrome system. Again, those are just different names for the same process, but the SQA wants you to use the terms electron transport chain. Glycolysis is what we're gonna cover in this video. We're gonna leave the citric acid cycle and the third stage for the other two videos. Glycolysis is the conversion of glucose to two pyruvate molecules with a net gain of two ATP. That is not new knowledge for you. You already know it from National 5. Okay. Now this can, it occurs through a series of enzyme controlled reactions. Again, that's not hugely new information for you. It occurs in the cytoplasm of cells, again, from National 5, and it has two stages, energy investment stage and energy payoff stage. Those bits are new. So we're going to focus on those two stages and what on earth is happening in the energy investment stage and then the energy payoff stage. During the energy investment stage, surprisingly enough, you invest energy. To invest means to give, okay? And the idea is the first stage of glycolysis involves the investment of two ATP, okay? Now, if you have a look at the diagram up there, it's not the clearest one in the world, but the idea is ATP breaks apart into PI and ADP. Now, not look where that PI goes. The PI, the inorganic phosphate, is given to the glucose. We start with glucose and we end with glucose 6-phosphate. That means that we have phosphorylated glucose, okay? Glucose has had a phosphate added to it to turn it from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, i.e. glucose plus phosphate there. If we look further down the chain at fructose 6-phosphate, we add in another orga inorganic phosphate in there and we end up with fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. That means basically we've got two phosphate molecules on that fructose now. OK, so we are investing two ATP to provide phosphate for the phosphorylation of glucose and its intermediates. Now, you do not need to know the words glucose 6-phosphate. You do not need to know the words fructose 6-phosphate or 1,6-bisphosphate. All you need to know is the wording on the left of the page. I've only put this diagram up to show you this is what's happening. OK, so what is happening is the idea is phosphate is being added at these two stages. Maybe this diagram helps you. Maybe it confuses you. OK, but the idea is you should be able just to memorize those words on the left. The job of the ATP is to provide phosphate for the phosphorylation of glucose and intermediates. That is crucial. I've seen it in exam questions quite a lot where they've asked, what is the role of ATP during an investment energy investment stage? And the role of it is to phosphorylate glucose and its intermediates. That's the only acceptable answer there. So here's your phosphorylation. The energy payoff phase is the second part of glycolysis. So we are still in glycolysis. Step one, energy investment phase, phosphorylation. Step two of glycolysis is our energy payoff phase. Here, we are getting our returns. We've invested something, we get stuff back. And what we get back here is four ATP. So we invested two, we've gained four, which means we have a net gain of two ATP. OK, we were at minus two ATP. We've now gained plus four ATP. We are now overall at plus two ATP. OK, so that is how we get our overall gain from this is how we do our sums for National 5. National 5 says we produce two ATP. Actually, what we do is we invest two, we get four back. So overall, we gain two ATP. OK, now. What else is also happening here, and this is a bit a bit of a guddle in this diagram, is dehydrogenase enzymes are doing a job. Now, if you dehydrogen something, you are taking hydrogen away. Dehydrogen dehydrogen dehydrogenase enzymes, I got it right that time. Dehydrogenase enzymes remove hydrogen plus their electrons and give them to this thing called NAD. 
Now, NAD is a coenzyme and its job is to pick stuff up and carry it places. It doesn't have substrate product quite reactions. So that's not what it does. A coenzyme tends to be something that carries from what I can tell from its, its sort of role. So the idea is NAD picks up the hydrogen and electrons and then it's called NADH as in NAD plus hydrogen. OK, so two things happening in the energy payoff phase. Number one, we're gaining four ATP for our net gain of two ATP overall in glycolysis, plus dehydrogenase enzymes are extracting hydrogen and electrons from the intermediates and passing them to NAD to create NADH. So there's a lot happening in there. OK, so we've got two enzymes on the work, dehydrogenase enzymes, which are doing a job. They're extracting hydrogen and electrons. Our coenzyme NAD picking up the NADH and then we've got our ATP job. So there's quite a lot happening in there. You need to know about the roles of all of those little bits. So the energy payoff phase, this is just the diagram in words. The energy payoff phase gives a yield of four ATP. Dehydrogenase enzymes remove hydrogen ions and electrons pass them to NAD for carrying to a later stage. We'll deal with that later. NAD is a coenzyme. Its job is just to carry hydrogen ions and electrons to a later stage. It does not change the hydrogen or the electrons. Now, people forget about the electrons. They talk about NAD carrying just the hydrogen. Remember the electrons. Don't forget about them because they are crucial for stage three of uh, overall aerobic respiration. So to summarize glycolysis, we have glucose being converted to pyruvate. OK, we have our energy investment stage where the idea is two ATP go in. We end up with two ADP, the phosphate ends up inside the glucose. We do not say 2 ATP, 2 ADP plus PI. The idea is we say that the PI, the inorganic phosphate, has gone in here. OK, we got our energy payoff phase where we get NAD converted to NADH and we also get 4 ADP and PI being converted to 4 ATP. So this entire diagram sort of summarizes what's going on there. The only thing missing from there is the dehydrogenase enzymes are not shown, but obviously they are doing their job. Now, that was a lot. OK, that was quite a lot for one particular part of respiration. You can see that, you know, compared to National 5, glucose to pyruvate 2 ATP, it's it's more. So important things to be aware of the role of dehydrogenase enzymes, the role of NAD and this idea of net gain of 2 ATP. So two go in at the start, four come out at the end. So overall, we have a net gain of 2 ATP. The next video is going to be all about the second stage, the citric acid cycle.